Welcome to Canada's Social Changemakers. My name is Justin Douglas, and today we're here with Sylvain Tremblay, internationally acclaimed artist and painter. Sylvain has exhibited his work around the world, is represented in numerous galleries on three continents, and has represented Canada at international pavilions, embassies, and expos. You are a very recognized artist around the world. You've been in galleries all over the place. Uh, but one of the ones that I've had the pleasure of seeing was the Never Apart exhibit that you did last year. Yeah. Uh, so Never Apart is a community center in Montreal. Yeah. And they did an exhibit called No Gender. And your art was featured there. Uh, I got to see it. It was absolutely beautiful. But do you want to talk about that exposition a little bit, how it came about, and what it was about? It started uh, uh, 20, no, it's 20 years ago. Um, I want, uh, I've been to uh, Vietnam and I accompany uh, parents they want to adopt in an orphanage. Oh wow. And I just heard the doctor said uh, this baby is hermaphrodite, that's the term that we use at that time. Okay. We don't know if we're going to do a boy or a girl. The doctors get to decide this. Uh, how does that work in Vietnam? You I heard that. Okay. And like, like you. Yeah. The same uh, surprise for me at that time. See, the their decision is based on what. Yeah. Exactly. What exactly? And uh, how did you? How could you decide? For somebody, then is between. Then okay. But I'm sure it's easier to remove, mm -hmm. but part of the body then. To have right, right, right. Then it, it stayed in my mind for years and years. I ask myself, and I think about this baby. I say, what's happened if they took the wrong decision, and why? Why they have to decide? Why not to just mm -hmm. leave the baby grow up and decide by? Then I decide to uh, secretly, uh, maybe five, 12, 10 years after, to do a, a painting on that subject. Interesting. And I think it was in my conscience. Yeah, yeah. And I decided to do one painting, but I keep it uh, uh, secretly. Really? Because, yeah, because f for me, it was, it was uh, outside of what uh, the people they used to see about myself. Mm -hmm. But I just showed to some people. And the people, they say, oh, yeah, what is, what is? And I said, uh, after I do another one, another one, mm -hmm. another one. After three paintings uh, about that subject, um, uh, curators come to my studio and say, hey, Sylvain, this is a subject, a today's subject. Mm -hmm. Very much go, so. Go, go, go. But, but I feel superficial because I don't know anything about right. that. I just, it was an experience. Yeah. I don't know. Then another friend come to uh, my studio. It's a photographer and say, Sylvain, go, but go to meet the people. Oh, wow. Like, like uh, they will be my... Um, my muse, mm -hmm. and I said, uh, okay, and we decide to to bring a camera too, and I said, okay, I, I'm I'm not uh, intersex people, but maybe these people, they have something to say, yeah. because more than more than I, I knew about that, I just just discover many many person, they had this operation when mm -hmm. they, they were a kid and they're frustrated about that right because they didn't have the choice for themselves on how their gender was decided for them yeah. then uh, this is the, to be uh, I think the, the term is in French is a part of what okay you know the voice yeah yeah uh, yeah and I decide not not say anything then each painting in the video is the message about each one then to show then it's happened uh, every w everywhere on the planet. Yeah. I decided to go to Taiwan, South Africa, uh, France, uh, Morocco, because it was on, uh, it's on the planet. And slowly mm -hmm. with Facebook, uh, social media, the people, they, they begin to connect to, together. Mm -hmm. Then when I meet one, this person introduced me to another one. Then what we did, when we go to, to uh, meet somebody who have the, the person before they had the experience to coach the next one to make them comfortable. Very cool. Yeah. In the beginning, like in South Africa, we go just to do a safari together. No camera, no filming. We just relax, begin to to know each other, 
And when we begin to be comfortable, we talk about what kind of uh, artistic uh, concept we could do together. Then that's uh, the audition and say, okay, the, the concept, it could be this, this. And if we arrive in the, in the next morning and oh, I don't feel for to do this one, okay, we change. Cool. Then th this project is it's a project about, uh, it's a group project, like the, the filmmaker Stéphane Olivier. Mm -hmm. And that's um, where I come from, the, the project. And slowly we have 12 paintings, about six is on uh, the subject, mm -hmm. about my interpretation, what I heard about some concept, and six is a portrait. Cool. Portrait. Very cool. That was, sometimes it was a little bit tough, and uh, they have one thing I decide to make it, uh, because when I uh, met the president, he told me they try a lot of um, uh, events to, to make the, the people uh, sensitive about that. And after one minute, when they finish, the people think about uh, mm -hmm. the so, past. Yeah. Then I said, okay, this project will be um, the people they will remember. Then I asked like a, a painter, an artist painter, when he, you have a muse, mm -hmm. could be naked. Okay. And if my muse is, is uh, intersex, is not naked, mm -hmm. that means it's a problem. Right. Then I say, okay, are you are you willing? Not everybody. Of course. Then yeah. the first one on the on the setup, be naked. Mm -hmm. That's me. Really? To make everybody <laughs> go for the boat. Go for the boat. Yeah. And the person say, oh, oh my god, okay. <laughs> and after they say, okay, tuk, tuk, tuk. Nice. And the filmmaker say, okay. <laughs> and. And there you go. Everybody have to have the, the courage to, to, to do it. Then that's mm -hmm. that's the that's the the way. Then I say, okay, if I ask to be, I want you to be naked. I have to be the, the first one. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and uh, finally, when we have uh, the, the the video, and the video is it's about uh, one thing. And I have to say that the real uh, uh, star about the, the video is these people. They accept. Because when I passed in their life, mm -hmm. I reopened some scarf. It was tough for them to yeah, come back to talk about. Of Sometimes course. they they cried everything. Right, all the trauma. But they did that for for not for them. Right. For the next one. Right, right. They will burn in a better world. I hope so. That's the that's the the concept. Then I know I opened your scarf. I know it's tough, but do it for the next one. They will burn on this planet and. Ma try to, to make a better world mm -hmm. for them. Maybe your your effort, it will for the next generation. So, yeah. so you were in New York recently. You had a studio down there. Yeah. So what was your experience like there for a while? It was amazing. I can't wait to come back to, to, to New York because uh, I, um, I like to travel and I like to have a studio in like in China, in Dubai, and now in New York, and each place is uh, influenced me, inspire me differently. Mm -hmm. And the last one in New York, it was funny because uh, before to be there, I expect a little bit what it, it, it could happen, mm -hmm. and finally, a surprise. The last, last, last month. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's the metal pieces that I found in a scrap metal place. Oh wow! But this one is well, it was uh, it was special because it come from houses, and in the past mm -hmm. Brooklyn was unsafe quarter. Right. And the people they have fence, uh, in the the window metal mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. metal real. bars, yeah. And now it's become safer. Okay. Then they just remove that. And when I found that, I said, my God, this is like a human fossil. Wow. And I took them and I included the painting with cement and wood. And it was the surprise because I didn't expect to, f to find this. I didn't No, but what a cool use of cultural items that are just yeah. right there. You can see life on, on, on them. Yeah. They, they, they paint maybe 10 times with different colors. Mm -hmm. And now with the rust, it is this is like a fossil. Then I said, okay, I will do in portrait. Mm -hmm but include the, the metal pieces. Then there's something that talks to me and it was a surprise. And, and uh, when you're not at home, um, always happen, your eyes is open. Uh, so you also have a coffee table book published at this point. Yeah. Uh, what is that one about? This one was the first book uh, 
done by uh, uh, New York uh, Gallery. Mm -hmm. And um, it was about who I am, where I come from, uh, our, our, how I'm thinking, uh, what inspired me, uh, my life. But it was, the, mm -hmm. it was at the, the beginning. Then a um, beautiful picture by uh, Nicola Maoki. And uh, he come to my studio, take the, the photo. And at that, time, at that moment, we will really uh, connect together because uh, it's, a, it's an important point because I keep the, the same photographer for the, n the next book. Great. And, um, and it's important to have a connection with uh, somebody, not just somebody come to take picture. Mm -hmm. Spend three days in my, in my studio to see how I'm walking yeah. and, and take a beautiful, beautiful photo. And after the interview, was was about my life. That's the first book that we, we launched now. It's, uh, it is eight, nine years ago. Okay, and now you have a second one coming out very soon. Yeah. The second one is uh, it's about my inspiration uh, about traveling. Then oh, to have wow. a studio all around the world, like right. from Montreal to China, China to Dubai, and Dubai to New York. And this one, uh, we have uh, uh, Gilly uh, Kareb. Okay. Uh, she come to New York, spend three days, four days there. And after we take the car, onto to Montreal, another three, four days. And uh, I like to, to have this, this kind of experience. Then mm -hmm. Because the, if the, the people just write about your art, I think you miss yeah. something. Yeah, then, yeah. then we had a couple of Skype to talk about, OK, what, what inspired me in China? Mm -hmm. What's the difference between China and after Dubai? In, uh, in uh, New York, what's happened from Montreal to traveling and mm -hmm. each place have different uh, soul, different uh, experience. Yeah. Then you can see it on the artwork. When you look at the one in China, you can see I was influenced by the Chinese calligraphy. Mm -hmm. Because I had a painter and he showed me how to do calligraphy. And in the beginning, he began to, to do um, Tai Chi. Yeah. So tai Chi. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tai Chi. And I said, oh my God. <laughs> I was just uh, want to laugh, and after you take a big brush, and same movement. Oh wow! Finally, it was a warm up about mm -hmm. to do his calligraphy because he used all his body to do the calligraphy. The movement you have to know the movement by art. Then you can put your soul. When that's you so do interesting. It. Then that's why they repeat, they repeat, they repeat, they repeat until mm -hmm. then they can do it like a. When you play guitar and you sing, mm -hmm. you don't have to think about your finger. Right, it becomes a natural put habit. This one there, this one there, and you can sing. Put your soul, put your soul in China. It was really important. And one thing the um, the group Chinese group they, they told me in the beginning when I paint, they they look at me mm -hmm. every day. They say, okay. They said your painting look like free, but because you're technically uh, really uh, um, good, you can fake it. <laughs> nice. It's yeah. like uh, for the background, I was, I was used to begin by the people, mm -hmm. the modeling pace, and after the background. Yeah. But if I want to do the background, the people is there, and mm -hmm. I fake the uh, movement in the background. Okay. And I decide to reverse my technique. Mm -hmm. Come back by the background, wait, and finish by the people. Very cool. Because the, in that way, mm -hmm. the movement is free for real. Yeah. And that's one of the things that happens in, the, in China. And that's the kind of thing we, we're talking uh, in the book. Each experience in each place. And, um, and again, we, uh, we asked to Nicolas Marocchi to take the photo. He, he, come to, uh, he came uh, to uh, New York City. And we spend uh, one week together. What sort of what's your reception when you go abroad to all these different places as a Canadian? Uh, uh, how do people respond to you? That's um, that's a, uh, a good question. I think uh, Canadians they well receive everyone on the planet. More or less, yeah, yeah. we have a good stamp. <laughs> I hope so. Canadian. Yeah. And when the people they they heard uh, my English, they say, oh, "Are you French?" <laughs> I say, "French Canadian." Then yeah. for an artist. Uh, they, they, they still think if I'm a French Canadian, I have something connect with uh, Paris, uh, right. France. 
Then they say, oh, that's why you are Nazis, because you have one of your part is from France. <laughs> then <laughs> if you have something from France, you, you could be a good artist. But, yeah. but uh, for, for an artist, I think the, the, the Canadian flag is, is good. Great. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. it makes me very proud and very happy to see Canadian artists doing well, not only at home, but internationally. So okay. for anyone who's not checked out Sylvain's work, I would strongly encourage you to do it. There's a website uh, where they can look you up, yeah. sylvaintremblay.ca. Yeah. SylvainTremblay.ca, you can check out his website there. There's the book that is already out as of 2006, I think was the first one. Yeah. And the next one will be coming out soon. Uh, so please take a moment to check out Sylvain's work and to support and appreciate our Canadian artists and talent. So thank you so very much for being here today. It has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you, Justin. Thanks.